Welcome back everyone, Jose to New One Crisis here and today we have a new episode of the Mendoza career. Round 10 of the FIA Formula One World Championship takes us to Spielberg around the area of the Styrian Mountains on the A1 ring for the Austrian Grand Prix. The 4.3 km A1 ring is still the second newest track behind Seppen Circuit. It's a modification of the old Osterreich ring and it features three long straights, a few right-handers that are both slow speed and high speed, as well as a twisty infield section that holds the only two left-hander corners on the track, both of which are medium speed. This asymmetry between left-handers and right-handers means the teams have a bit of a challenge setting up the car. Whenever they wanted to set it balance or favorite the right handers or even the left handers in some cases. Equally challenging is setting up the car to be able to take advantage of the three big straights, but keeping it stable enough to be able to take the middle section as fast as possible. The only realistic overtaking spots are the braking areas at the end of each of the straights, so if we're going to see overtakes, expect them to see them there. Teams will be expected to bring the high downforce configuration packages they have as they try to combat the low air density on this track, which means they will have low downforce and less drag than their packages will usually suggest. Tire wear is usually not much of a factor around this track, so expect the soft tire to easily be able to make the one stop work. However, the soft tire's durability may not even be important around this track because it is expected that during the race there will be rain. We expect that rain will be during the beginning of the race. We do think it will clear out around the end, but we're not sure how early the track will clear out, so it's just a matter of seeing. This also means that teams will be bringing a bit more downforce than they would have liked, but anything to be able to keep the car on the road in the wet conditions. Generally speaking, the one-stop strategy would have been the preferred strategy for all of the teams had the situation remained dry, but we will see how the weather affects these strategies. We expect them to add at least one more stop to be ready in case the weather changes on them, so if they were going for a two-stop, they will likely be using a three-stop and so on. Despite that, the one-stop and the two-stop are the preferred strategies, with the one-stop having a big advantage. Our most improved teams are McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari, both of which improved by 0.9 points according to our experts. Jaguar Cosworth see a slight small improvement of 0.5, however they are being caught by Jordan Mugen Honda who improved by 0.7 points. Benetton Playlife, slight improvement but not enough to be able to keep up with Jordan, they just improved by 0.4. VAR Honda, slight improvement as well, but still falling back from Benetton at 0.3 improvement. Williams BMW finally getting in gear with a small improvement of 0.8, but more significant than teams like VAR or Benetton. Arrows do not improve. Sauber does improve a slight bit and managed to tie Arrows. Prost and Minardi, for their performance in the previous race, do not get a single performance improvement point. In terms of the drivers, we have a bit of a change that we will get to in a moment. Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard do not improve much, the reason for that is that their qualifying performance was not as good as it could have been expected. Michael Schumacher loses a few points, but Rubens Barrichello does meet the objectives Ferrari have set for him, which is why he increases a lot of points, 27 in fact. Heinz Arlo Frensen and Jarno truly managed to score points in the French Grand Prix, which means their performance improved. Luciano Berti replaces Eddie Irvine for this race. The reason for that is that Eddie Irvine was feeling unwell. He was later diagnosed with appendicitis and he's undergoing an appendectomy. So he's replaced by test driver Luciano Berti. Alex Mendoza loses a few points thanks to his DNF at the previous race. Ralph Schumacher and Jenson Button. Jenson Button specifically improves points, but they have been performing excellent, excellently so far this season. Giancarlo Fisichella loses some points, as does Alexander Wirth. Their performance have not been good this year. Jean Alesi and Nick Heidfeld. Alesi did improve a bit, Heidfeld loses a bit of points. Again, it's very hard to judge the Pros team due to the amount of DNFs they've been having. On the other hand, Mika Salo is still one of the highest rated drivers this season. 
Pedro Diniz loses a few points, Pedro de la Rosa increases his, his rating by a few points, Jos Verstappen loses a few points but he was highly rated as well. Marginez stays at 100, very highly rated, Gaston Matsakane however loses a few points. Jack Villeneuve loses his 100% rating due to his lack of performance during the French Grand Prix. S uh, not the same thing with Ricardo Sonta, but he does lose a few points. Ricardo Sonta has been very, has been having some underperformance, and I think VAR would like him to improve. And now, with the pre-race events done, it's time to get down there and see how qualifying went. For the fifth time in a row, Michael Schumacher will take pole position, this time for the Austrian Grand Prix. Right behind him, just seven thousandths of a second behind, will be Mika Hakkinen. Third is David Coulthard, bit more of a distance between him and his teammate, Rubens Barrichello is fourth, plenty of time behind will be Raul Schumacher with an impressive lap, he is fifth. Sixth will be Jarno Trulli, four thousandths of a second behind. Raul Schumacher, very impressive performance from the Italian. Heinz Harald Frensen will be 7th with Jacques Villeneuve in 8th. Just a bit behind, 300th of a second will be Alex Mendoza, excuse me, 200th of a second basically. Alex Mendoza in 9th. 10th will be Jensen Button, 200th of a second behind Alex Mendoza. Mika Salo will be 11th, impressive performance from the Finn in the Sauber. 12th will be Giancarlo Fisichena in the, in the, in the Benetton. Six thousandths of a second behind the Sauber of Mika Salo. Again, impressive performance from Salo. Pedro Diniz, also with a solid qualifying, his 13. Overall solid qualifying from the Sauber team. Alexander Wurz will be 14. Uh, Jos Verstappen is 15 in the Arrows, with Sean Alesi 16 in the Prost. Amazing performance from the Frenchman, putting his Prost in 16. Pedro de la Rosa right behind in 17. Margene is 18th, good solid performance from the Spanish man in the Minardi, 19th will be Nick Heidfeld also in the pros, 20th will be Ricardo Sonta, I just spoke how he needed to improve his performance, this is not a good show, 21st will be Luciano Berti in his debut, definitely not a good qualifying performance and at the back will be Gaston Mazzacane in the second Minardi. And if you needed a reminder of what's at stake today, Mika Hagenen currently leads the World Drivers Championship by zero points. He has the wins differential over Michael Schumacher, both of them at 52 points. David Coulthard is right behind with 40 points. Rubens Barrichello is fourth with 34 points. Alex Mendoza is fifth with 23 points. Jarno Trulli and Heinz Harald Frensen are both tied for sixth place with seven points apiece. Jack Villeneuve is in 8th with 7 points apiece as well. Well, they are all tied for 6. Eddie Irvine, who will not be racing in this race for reasons already described, is in 9th with just 5 points. Raul Schumacher in 10th, 3 points. Fisichella is 11th with 2 points. And Jensen Button and Ricardo Santa are both tied for 12th with a single point to their name. 
As for the constructor standings, McLaren Mercedes lead the way with 92 points, 6 more than Ferrari's 86. Jaguar Cosworth is way, way back, they're obviously not fighting for this championship, but they're third with 28 points. Jordan have half as many points, 14 points to their name, VAR with just 8 points, Williams have 4 points, and Benetton are the last classified constructor with just 2 points. And now before we head into the race, it's time for me to make the usual shoutouts. Shoutouts to Jorge Alonso Stretch It for making this career possible, and shoutouts to the F1 Challenge Discord server, which links are on the description. And if you are really liking this content so far, well, comment, like, subscribe, the usual YouTuber stuff, and there's a coffee link down there if you really want to support me. Now, let's head down there, it is completely raining, so the forecast was right, so... Let's see who can make the best of the conditions. Well, the weather is being as bad as predicted. Everyone is on wet tires and is ready to go. The engines are revved up, the, uh, the clutches are ready, and they've been dropped. The race is on. Good start by Michael Schumacher. Poor start by Elkman, but you can see him dropping a few positions. Nick Hagen will try to attack him into turn one. Kind of. Both of them, even, even they could have run wide. But still, Michael Schumacher in the lead of the race. Ruben Parrigello in third place. Nice, nice start by the Brazilian trying to attack Mika Hakkinen, and not not finding the gap. He he tried to go for it there, but in the end, uh, Mika Hakkinen didn't give him any space. Michael Schumacher creating a decent, nice gap between him and Mika Hakkinen, and rem and well, Michael Schumacher, one of the best wet weather drivers in Formula One. Pretty sure if he has the opportunity, he's gonna create a big gap. Oh, it looks like Ruben Sparkler made a mistake. No, he's fine. He's still in third place, but David Kluger is going to attack him, trying to get that place in the podium back. Ruben Sparkler around wide. David Kluger will definitely go try to attack him then. But in the meantime, yeah, David Kluger got the position. But in the meantime, uh, Michael Schumacher streaking away into the distance, Mika Hagenen trying to do his best, maybe it is due to fuel, maybe it is due to talent, but Michael Schumacher is just going, he's, he's going to create that gap, trying to make the most of this opportunity, he leads the first lap, he's leading the race, let's see what he can do. In the meantime, let's go to the midfield, where Alex Mendoza, initial bat was terrible, that's a solid overtaking move on Jarno Trulli, initial lap was terrible, but so far it looks like he's he's doing fine for now. You can see how much spray there is out there anyway. This is Nick Heidfeld, and we've heard that he's been struggling a bit with power delivery. It would be a very, very bad time if the uh, Peugeot engine were to blow up on lap 3. That will be Nick Heidfeld out of this race. I can understand why Peugeot wants to leave Formula 1, It's their, their engines just have not delivered to the promise they've had for the previous years and yeah I can understand why there's so much tension between Prost and Peugeot. And something that's interesting to note is that Mendoza for some reason has decided to go on a lower down for setup than most teams, that, the, that even his team in Luciano Berti move on Jacques Villeneuve, Villeneuve runs wide, I think Mendoza got it, yeah Mendoza is going on a low down for his configuration, Villeneuve trying to go back, will he do it, no he will not, lower down for his configuration, apparently setting up the car for the wet, that uh, for the dry excuse me, that will make it difficult to control the car on the wet, but it seems he's doing a good job so far. We saw the guy hit impressive top speeds yesterday in qualifying, uh, a bit better than even the Ferraris and McLarens, but in the wet you would imagine that would be a disadvantage, it doesn't seem to be showing, and the advantages of that is that in these three massive straights of the A1 ring he can really close up to his opponents and put moves on them, that is Raul Schumacher, that is him up to 5th place. And even though Ralph Schumacher is going to have better traction out of the corner, Mendoza has top speed advantage, so I don't think he's going to be able to threaten him. No chance, Mendoza up to 5th place. Wonder how, how, how high he can go.
I imagine teams will be wanting to pit as soon as possible because as you can see the conditions are getting pretty dry out there. I imagine teams will be putting the intermediate tires or perhaps trying to gamble on the soft tires or the hard tires, I mean the dry tires, to see if they can take advantage of those ahead of them. It looks like uh, the Jaguar team and those is going to go for the dry tires. Let's see if that little gamble works out for him. Uh, the situation very much looks like it will be better to go to intermediates, but we will see what happens. Mendoza will be the first to pit, and we've heard that uh, Michael Schumacher will be coming in pretty soon. In goes Mendoza, careful with the white line, you don't want to get penalized. But in goes Mendoza, we will see if uh, going on the slicks early will be of an advantage to him. I legitimately do not remember the last time we saw a Prost finish a race, and in this case, they won't do it. Jean Alesi has a gearbox issue. As you can see, he's slowing down massively. He simply doesn't have any drive. He's stuck in third gear, as I understand. That will be Prost out of the race, and again, like, how do you expect a team to survive? if they can't even finish races. Now we got an interesting situation developing here. My Schumacher will be coming into the field and he has been completely unopposed in this space. Mr. Hackney not being able to keep up with him as well. We heard that uh, Michael Schumacher wanted to go for the free stop strategy, but he possibly started on a lower fuel load than most drivers out there, which explains his pace as well as the fact he's widely recognized as one of the best wet weather drivers in Formula 1. He's putting on the intermediate tires, not the slicks like Mendoza did. It's probably the more conservative choice, and it's found the correct choice considering he's in the lead, but the question is, will he be able to retain the lead? The gap to put on Mika Hagenin was substantial. I don't see Mika Hagenin anywhere yet. Michael Schumacher retains the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. Omen Farikolo coming out of the pitch right now. It looks like Mendoza's gamble on this leaks worked out for him because he's coming up to turn one real quickly. Where is he right now? There he is. Ruins Farikolo just coming out, little twitch. For Mendoza, their little grip on the track, but there he goes, there they go, side by side, up to turn 3, this is turn 2, turn 3, Mendoza's top speed advantage works out, Ruin Farakel trying to get the position, little twitch for Mendoza again, little contact there as well, and now it's a run down into turn 4, who will get the advantage? I think it's Mendoza, the lower, the lower downforce he has, he's faster than even the McLarens, and the McLarens, so far this season, they've shown Careful there Rubens, they've shown a significant top, top speed advantage even over the Ferraris. So the fact that Mendoza had managed to be faster than the McLarens really goes to show how little downforce he put on the car, but even in the wet, it did seem to he did seem to be able to keep good control of the car, but it seems that advantage is disappearing as the track dries out. And Rubens Barrichello's hopes was that he would be able to get past Alex Mendoza pretty quickly. It has not worked out so far because, as I've mentioned previously, the Jaguar is running a, lo uh, a smaller wing than most teams out there that gives them a significant top speed advantage, which even the Ferrari has it very difficult to overhaul, as well as the fact that it's very difficult to overtake in the twisty sections of the A1 ring. So Barrichello is stuck behind. It would help if he had slick tires, but right now he only has intermediate, while Mendoza is on the slick tires. He has a bit of extra grip compared to Barrichello, as you can see the track is fairly dry. 
should be completely dry in a few laps but that's some grip that Rubens Barrichello is losing that could help him overtake Mendoza it's definitely Rubens Barrichello definitely losing some time behind the Jaguar driver so far Mika Hagen has pitted Rubens Barrichello has pitted he's right behind uh, Michael Schumacher he's a lap down but now Michael Schumacher with pit the gap was so significant that Ferrari could afford to have Michael Schumacher wait an extra few laps before bringing him in that's 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 the advantage of having a significant gap over your opponent so in goes Michael Schumacher he shouldn't lose the lead unless Ferrari commit some sort of terrible pit stop which they don't and off he goes easy stop for the Ferrari crew and Michael Schumacher still in the lead of this Grand Prix as opposed to most Mendoza went for the slick tires on his first stop which means he didn't have to do an extra stop to put intermediates but he is uh, by default he was running a two stop so he's gonna have to pit again for a new set of slicks and enough fuel to finish the race with that in mind he's probably gonna have uh, fresher slick tires than others around him and by others I mean Mika Hakkinen who's gonna move easily into second place but he's gonna be ahead of Mr. Rubens Barrichello who is in fourth position if I've checked the graphs correctly and he should have fresher tires so even if the Jaguar is a worse car than the Ferrari he should be able to hold on to third position with no issue whatsoever in goes um, Alex Mendoza into the pits into a new set of slicks and some fresh uh, some fresh fuel some more fuel anyway he should be able to hold on to third with no issue at all Mendoza is pushing really hard on cold rubber it looks like he's trying to catch Mika Hakken I doubt that's going to be feasible careful with the gravel okay he didn't crash into the wall there but that's a really dangerous thing again pushing on cold rubber I don't think even if he pushed hard he's not catching Hakkinen so he should definitely be more careful with how much pushing he's doing don't want to DNF from here it seems there's some hydraulics or suspension issue going down on Jos Verstappen's car he seems to be fine for now but he's pulling off the road that will be just be stepping out of this race either hydraulics or suspension or maybe even a tire a punch or something but that is him out of this event and with so few laps to go too i don't know what what's more annoying either having a car failure at the beginning of the race or at the end of the race where is matakane going indeed what happened with Matsakan? It looks like he lost control, probably some sort of car issue, but in any case, that will be Gaston Matsakan out of the race and he's gonna have to get pulled out of there, out of the road as soon as possible. And here we see Jarno truly at a solid day in sixth position. So he's looking at a solid, well, it's just one point, but every single point counts. Every single point counts? Oh, that will be a brake failure, I hope he's okay. At least the car ended well outside of the track, so no one's going to hit him or anything. I think he will be fine, but that's him out of the race, and with so few laps to go as well, him too. And so we enter the final lap of the race. You can see over there Giancarlo Fisichella doing as well as everyone else his final lap. We've heard some report that they had some issues, but it looks like they will be fine. They will be able to finish this race. Or maybe not. That is also probably a hydraulics issue or a suspension issue perhaps, but that will be him out of the race. He will of course be classified, but he will not get to finish the race and if he manages to finish this lap Michael Schumacher will score a grand slam pole position fastest lap and race win while leading every single lap in the race only one corner to go and a bit of straight he just needs to complete this little bit we've seen some DNFs here in the closing laps but it won't affect 
it won't affect Michael Schumacher, he wins the Austrian Grand Prix. Second will be Mika Hakkinen, who in wet weather races he has not been able to deliver as well as he could have. He's usually been usurped by someone else, either by his teammate or even by Alex Mendoza, who is right now in third, but not this time around. He manages to hold on to second in this race. Third will be the previously mentioned Alex Mendoza. There he is rounding, rounding out the final corners. Every single time there's wet weather, he seems to put on a solid performance. And today is no different. Alex Mendoza will score third for the Jaguar team. Solid job by the Venezuelan, nicely done, had a, a bit of a DNF risk after his final pit stop, but at the very least managed, managed to keep it together and, well, keep it on the podium for the Jaguar team. Solid bounce back from the French Grand Prix. So confirmation that Michael Schumacher wins the Austrian Grand Prix, followed by Mika Hakkinen in second place. Third place, final step on the podium will be Alex Mendoza in the Jaguar. Fourth place is Rubens Barrichello from fifth place man David Coulthard, McLaren Mercedes. Sixth place will be Raul Schumacher, who scores another point. He is a lap down. Seven, Jacques Villeneuve. Eight, Heinz Harald Frensen. Ninth, Jensen Button. 10th, Giancarlo Fisichella, who despite the fact that he indeed DNF, he managed to complete over 90% race distance, and as such, he is actually classified. Ricardo Sonta in 11th place, 12th place, Mika Salo, decent performance from the Sauber man, even better performance from the VAR man, uh, let's see who else, Marchene in 13th place in the Minardi, nicely done, Pedro Diniz 14th in the Sauber, and finally, 15th place for Luciano Berti in the Jaguar. There are some reports, some rumors that Luciano Berti might be looking to replace Alex Mendoza for the Jaguar team for 2001. These, these rumors are unconfirmed and after that performance, then again, it was uh, hampered by the fact that he had that incident with Alex Burtz. That might not be the performance the Jaguar team is looking for. Jarno Trulli also managed to finish at least 90% race distance. He is in 16th place. 17th place, Josh Verstappen, if my maths are correct, he also managed to complete at least 90% race distance. Same thing with Gaston Matsakane. The proper DNFers, the people that did not, did, that, excuse me, that are completely unclassified are Pedro De La Rosa, Jarno Lacy, Alex Wirtz, and Nick Heidfeld. And also additional confirmation that Michael Schumacher did get the fastest lap of the race. So in the World Drivers' Championship, that means Michael Schumacher retakes the lead, four points over Mikakin in 62 to 58. Both have the same number of wins, so if they happen to tie, we will go down to second places. David Coulthard is in third with 42 points. Just above Rubens Barrichello, 37 points, 5 point difference between them. Alex Mendoza with 27 points. Again, he only scores plenty points and podiums whenever there is a wet weather race. We haven't had those much of those, but whenever they've happened, he tends to put on a good result. Jarno Trulli in 6th place, tied with Heinz Harald Frensen in 7th place. Both of them have 7 points. Same thing, Jack Villeneuve, 7 points as well. Eddie Irvine still in ninth position, of course he didn't participate in this race. Raul Schumacher with 4 points, added another point, closing in on Eddie Irvine. Giancarlo Fisichella just 2 points, Jenson Button and Ricardo Sonta both have a single point to their name. Luciano Berti is now in 23rd place, do not expect him to move at all. Not much movement in the Constructors' Championship, McLaren Mercedes hit exactly 100 points, Ferrari is right behind with 99 points, a long way back is Jaguar with 32 points, I doubt anyone is gonna catch them. For third place, Jordan has 14 points, VAR Honda, fifth place, 8 points, Williams BMW scoring 5 times for 5 points are now in sixth place, they haven't moved at all. 
Benetton only seventh position, just two points to their name. Everyone else is unclassified. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this episode. Hope you liked it. Comment, like, subscribe, the usual YouTuber stuff, and there's a link down there to my coffee page if you really want to support this content. And I hope you join us for the next episode. For the next round at Germany, it will be the French, the, the French? What am I talking about? The German Grand Prix. Hope to see you there. Goodbye.